Ah yes, the famous sliding carousel, the content that rotates at the top of almost every single web page on the internet. Maybe not quite every single page, but you know what I'm talking about. The carousel is the sliding box that uh, slides, you know, left to right, up to down, whatever, you know, way, fades in and out to different pieces of content that you're featuring on typically your homepage or the top of your web pages. And it's fairly complicated to code standalone. If you were to code it in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, it does require quite a bit of work, especially if you're talking about a responsive carousel that you want to be able to work on mobile devices, large screens, and adapt to all these different sizes and to different heights of content. Uh, it can get quite hairy. And believe me, I know that because I always would have to code carousels before Bootstrap came out. And when it came out, I haven't hand coded a carousel since because I don't need to. I don't need to reinvent the wheel. So it's it's very relieving to know that something like this is already built and it's managed and done very well. So you don't really have to worry about it. Now it's good to know the components and how it works. And that's why we're doing this course because you, you want to know how to do these things so you could find efficient ways to develop websites. But you also want to be able to, uh, you know, know the ins and outs of how it works so that if something goes wrong, you can go in and pick it apart. All right, so here we are in carousel.html. Now, keep in mind, carousel uh, is a JavaScript plugin built into Bootstrap, so obviously you need that hooked in. And you do have it hooked in on your structure here in the footer. You got your bootstrap min.js. And so that's important to have that set up and ready to go. And in here, in our container, I'm going to just code the basic skeleton of a carousel because there are a few basic components of the carousel. First, we have the parent div, the main wrapper, which is going to have the, the idea of whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it my carousel. Now, keep that in mind because you're going to be using that a couple times throughout the, uh, the markup here. Class. It needs to have the class of carousel to get the styling and slide. And then it needs to have the data ride attribute, which is it's a bootstrap attribute that they created called carousel. Don't ask me why, it just has to be there, probably for the JavaScript plugin. Now we need to have what is called the indicators. And that is basically an ordered list that will indicate what slide you're on. One, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. So the carousel indicators, the unordered or the ordered list has to have the class of carousel dash indicators. And that is going to get you some bootstrap styles and also hook it into the, the plugin so they can use that to navigate throughout the carousel as well. You also need to have the wrapper for the slides and that is going to be a div and it's going to have the class of carousel dash inner and roll equals list box. Now you could probably leave role and list box out of it. In fact, you can probably leave role out of every single time you've written role as an attribute, but it's basically for semantic purposes and um, maybe there's some styling involved, but it's basically just to, to be as semantic as possible. Now in here, you need to have uh, a few sets of divs that have the class of item. Inside item, you actually need to have an image and we'll fill this out shortly. And you can optionally have a div with the class of carousel-caption. Now that basically is the text within the carousel. You can omit that and just have an image, but uh, I'm gonna show you it anyway because uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna use it. So copy that and paste it out two more times. And here is the basic structure of the carousel. Okay, now outside of the wrapper for the slides, there's one last thing here. You just need to have the controls. And those are the left and right arrows essentially on each side of the carousel. So that those are A tags and they have the class. The first one is left for the left um, arrow and then carousel dash control. And then it's gonna have the href of the ID of the carousel itself. So that needs to be my carousel is what I called mine. And then roll button. Okay. And then it also needs to have the data dash slide attribute, which is prev for previous. So that tells the JavaScript plugin for carousel. This is going to be, this is going to slide the content left or previous rather. 
Okay. And and then we're going to leave that for now. I'm going to copy this. There's We have to fill content in here in all of these tags. So I'm just going to give you the structure first. Now, A class, right, carousel control, uh, all these are the same except for this is going to be next. There we go. So here is the basic structure of the carousel right there. You got my carousel right here. Whoops. You have the indicators, you have the wrapper for the slides and the controls. So now let's go up to the top here and uh, work our way down to actually make this uh, work. So we have our list item for our indicators, data, target. We need to select or target my carousel. So pound my carousel. And that's going to uh, say that it's indicated or it's um, connected with the my carousel uh, carousel. That's for the JavaScript plugin. Data dash slide dash two equals. And now it needs to slide to the first slide, which um, is going to be zero because it is zero indexed, meaning the first number in the slides is actually zero. We've talked about that uh, before. Basically, when things are zero indexed, it starts at zero, one, and two, even though zero is the first one. It's just kind of how it works in programming. And then it's going to have the class of active. So it is active for the first slide. Now we're going to copy this, paste it two more times. This needs to change to one, this to two, and these other two don't need or should not have the class of active because obviously you can't have them all active at once. So there we go. There's our indicators. Those are done. Wrapper for the slides. Now the first one has to have the class of active. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Uh, that's important to note. Now this image, we're going to just uh, pull some... Uh, stock images, uh, or placeholder images off of placekitten.com. HTTP colon slash slash placekitten.com slash and then the size of the image that you want. I'm going to say 1260 slash 490. So an image that is 1260 by 490. And I'm going to say alt cute kitten. And so that's going to literally pull uh, a placeholder image of a cat into our site. And you can do that with placeholder or placekitten.com or placehold.it is another one. Basically, it's just instead of you creating assets in Photoshop just to try stuff out, you can just pull them off the web using uh, cute little placeholder sites like placekitten.com. Carousel caption. And here I'm just going to add some text. I'm going to say level four heading. Um, welcome to the carousel. And then a paragraph tag. I'm just going to put some uh, basic lorem ipsum in there. Good to go. Now, same deal here. I'm just going to copy the inside of this item and paste it because why do it over and over again? But I'm just going to change a couple things so you can see that it's different content. So I'm going to change the height of this image to 500. Uh, Cute kitten is the same. And I'm going to change the H4 to and another slide. And then I'm going to change the third one here to, let's say, 495 in height. And then I'll say the final slide, happy face. Okay, save that. Now move down to controls. Uh, just a couple quick things you need to do in controls. Inside your A tag here, the first one, you need to have a couple spans. The first one is going to have the class of glyph icon. And then glyph icon dash chevron dash right. Now chevron is the right arrow. Uh, sorry, chevron left because we're going to do the left arrow. And then below that span class sr dash only previous. So for screen readers only show that that is previous. Okay, span. This one's going to have the class of glyph icon and then glyph icon dash right. Sorry, chevron dash right. And then the next one here will have the, again, class of sr dash only. Next. Save this. Now our carousel is done and coded. Let's see what it looks like. And here we have our carousel. And for some reason, it looks like this isn't quite working. Uh, but the second one is. And Third one's not. So for some reason, uh, Place Kitten's not pulling up an image that this this side. So I'm going to change it to 510 and let's do 520 for those other two that aren't working. There we go. So here's our carousel with our cute kittens. So welcome to the carousel. You have our text in here. So this is the caption. 
We have our arrows left and right. You can see it has little shadows in, in, in under them when you hover so that you can click and it will slide the content. You can see the indicator here as well. You can click the indicator and it will actually navigate to the different images. Now it looks like our silly third image isn't working. So let's, uh, let's do another size, I guess. 530 for the last one. Not promising anything. There we go. That's a cute kitten. Okay, there we go. So here's our carousel. Now you have the image back here and then the carousel caption indicators and the navigation controls. You can put as much content as in here as you want. You could put, um, you know, you could restyle it a little bit if you wanted to use grids or if you wanted to add buttons. And yeah, and then this is also responsive. So if I were to resize this, boom, boom. It's kind of a little bit too much text there. So what I'd probably do there is hide the text on mobile devices using a media query, media query or the uh, helper class hidden extra small. So let me just show you, for example, I'm going to hide the first carousel caption. So carousel caption hidden dash XS. So that should hide the carousel caption on extra small screens. There we go. So there you go. If you don't want to be able to do that, or if you just want to hide the paragraph, let me show you another little trick while we're here. So the paragraph class hidden extra small. Now if I refresh the, oh, that's a cute kitten. The paragraph is hidden. So it's a little bit more, you can see the second one, it shows the paragraph, but in the first one, it hides the paragraph just to make it a little bit easier on mobile devices to read. There we go. That is the bootstrap carousel. Play around with it. Check out the documentation. It is at getbootstrap.com under the JavaScript uh, section. And then you could just head down to the carousel module and you can read all about the carousels. The examples are here. Markup, we've already kind of covered this stuff. Uh, captions are optional. It tells you about usage. If you want to use multiple carousels, you need to have different IDs and the different options. You can, you can change how fast and how slow you want the things to work and you can use the keyboard to, um, you know, navigate through the carousel, different methods. And if you're using jQuery, yeah. And so basically that's the carousel play around with it. And I'll see you in the next lecture. We're going to be jumping into some cool stuff with bootstrap.